Celia, in my struggle to know whether or not there's a God, uh, one thing I like to try to do is to make an assumption that there is God and then look at some characteristics that are problems in the world and see if that uh, assumption that there is a God can make a more coherent picture and then maybe that'll reflect back. And one of those topics is the nature of virtue. So if I asked you as a, both a biologist and a theologian, if you assume this is a theistic world, which you do, uh, what is the nature of virtue and how did it come about? Yes, I think the, the nature of virtue is a, is a fascinating topic, but I understand virtue as being habits of mind. So there are three different kinds of virtue. There's the intellectual virtues, there's the moral virtues, and then there's the theological virtues. And as a theologian, I'd want to put the theological virtues first, or pri in a primary sense, which is faith, hope, and, and charity, or caritas. Mm -hmm. um, and that ability to love, I think, is really fundamental to the expression of all the other virtues. Mm -hmm but also uh, practical wisdom, which is, which again is, is a kind of in between the intellectual virtues and the, and the moral virtues. It's like, a, it's like a means through which we know whether we're acting virtuously or not. So in order to be able to know that we act justly, we have to have prudence or practical wisdom. In order to know whether we are, are acting with, with fortitude or with courage, we, we, have to, uh, we have to have practical wisdom as well. Uh, um, and so the... So I would say that for a theologian, then practical wisdom is one of the most important virtues that we need to focus in on because it helps us to understand how to act to right. But in, in order to have the uh, intellectual or practical uh, 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 virtue, do, do you need the theological virtue first? It would seem, you don't, people I know seem to have both of those, uh, practical mm -hmm. and intellectual virtue without believing in theology, although they may have their own kind of charity. Uh, yes. I don't know about faith. Yes, yes. I think the, the, there's a distinction, again, between what's called acquired virtues and infused virtues. Mm -hmm. Acquired virtues are ones that anyone can learn. They might learn them at school, they might learn them in the family, mm -hmm. they might learn them in the ecclesial community, whereas infused virtues are, are virtues given by the grace of God. Um, and so those ones, as it were, are not learned at all. They're just sort of given as gift. Um, and, and, and I like that distinction in the classic tradition because it helps us understand maybe where or why in what sense some people are able to, to act even beyond what they would normally be able to do if they just learnt in a, in a habit of mind, that they were sort of given this gift of being able to, 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 have to act in a certain kind of way because of this infused virtue. If you don't believe in God or you don't know whether you believe in God, uh, I'd be in the latter case, um, can you still have infused virtue? That is a really fascinating question and is one I've discussed with some other scholars on infused virtues because I don't think that position is ruled out. In other words, I think it might be possible to, to have infused virtue even in the non-believer, but it'd be like, like a kind of implicit Christianity, the sense in which there's a, there's a gift that's given even though that person isn't, isn't acknowledging the source of that gift. Um, although when Thomas Aquinas wrote about it, he assumed that only those who were Christian believers could have infused virtues. Okay, so, that, so that's an interesting, uh, interesting analysis. Um, but are those kinds of virtues, you mentioned charity, and uh, uh, do, can they come about another way other than God infusing it? That sounds like a, a special divine action or, or, mm. or something that's more than metaphor. It's not so God, it's not like God created the whole universe and, 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 you know, you're in the universe and therefore God has this infusion. Is, is that a special injection? Yes, I, th I, it's very hard to tell exactly what it is, but, but I do think it's, it's where there's a special, there is a special sort of action of the spirit, if you like, but it's not sort of going against the natural world, you know, okay. necessarily, but it's a transformative process. So, so it's, it's like the, um, it's like Pentecost. In other words, it's, there's an understanding of, of something special, a tra special transformation happening in the human person, mm -hmm. whether you're aware of it or not. And that's how I understand infused virtue. But that's not to say that, that grace, if you want to call it that, can't work in unbelievers or those of other religious traditions, because we don't have, we, we can't be policemen on, the, on where grace falls. 
It's because that's, that's, that's the premise of God. So I'm not in a position to, to say just because someone isn't naming themselves as Christian that they can't express those kinds of virtues. So some of the, the most deeply loving people in the world may be from another religious tradition, for example. And that's fine on, on this view that you could see, you could see, still see it as being a grace given virtue from God, but, but it's one that hasn't been recognized as from the same, from, from, from the God as, as Christians understand God. And they'll get credit for it, right? Well, uh, the credit in the sense that it depends. I mean, I, I, I think that, that where we don't earn our way to heaven, that's, that comes as, as, as a gift of God as well. So um, we, we're all sinners and, um, and we're trying to, to find our way, you know, to, to become reformed and transformed. So um, I, I think virtues are there to help us on the way.